Hey everybody, welcome to another First Impressions video here on the channel. Today I bring you four brand new Volume 1s courtesy of Yen Press. They were kind enough to send me these four books my way so that I could talk about them with you guys. Now let's get started. The first one that we're going to talk about is When the Villainess Seduces the Main Heroine. Here we have Volume 1 written by Kasai Fuji. Now this is interesting it's the one book here with the parental advisory sticker on and i was worried that i couldn't show any of what was going to happen in this book but it turns out to be more suggestive dialogue there are a lot of exchanges here that even made me kind of blush a little not gonna lie i'm like oh uh, okay i feel like i shouldn't be reading these conversations but i am there's a lot of words being used that i don't necessarily approve of being used in a regular basis. I'll get to that in a second. So what essentially this is, is a romance slash revenge story. We follow the character of Akuya, a spurned fiance who gets cheated on. Her prince, whom she has been engaged with for many years, it's an assigned marriage. The prince fell for a former commoner who rose up the ranks in not necessarily the most wholesome of ways. This character is called Sei, and Akuya has had enough of this and takes this opportunity to strike back at the prince and actually declares her love and seduction for the character of Sei, wooing her as well as exposing the prince for the puny man that he is. So now Akuya and Sei are bound in a new steamy relationship, the two of them together. Akuya is very seductive of the uh, mistress type, and now she is going to teach Sei all about romance in a very steamy and passionate affair. Of course, say being a commoner, she has her reasons for doing this. This does get explored uh, towards the end of the book. You get to learn more about her uh, origin, if you will. The majority of the book is spent on the day-to-day -day adventures with this lovely couple, of course, exploring their romance together. So when you first open it, of course, you might have noticed that I pointed to all the chapters in this book. That surprised the heck out of me 23 chapters but turns out i did not do my homework when i started reading this book the mangaka created this as a web series and posted most of the stories and strips i guess sort of like comic strips on social media so it garnered enough attention to be published physically as a tankobon and here we have the larger trim sized edition thanks to yen press so that's why the chapters are so small typically it'll be two or three pages per chapter so like I said, the majority of the story is dedicated to the blooming relationship between these two characters, which is very nice, sweet, and hot and heavy at the same time. They go all over the place in this book, but it's never gross. It's always just mischievous and fun and a little spicy. I thought, like I said at the beginning, that I couldn't show you anything in here, but we're fine. I can show you everything. This is like NC-17 type dialogue, so you might want to uh, be aware of that so it is a not safe for work book honestly i thought this was not for me at all but i grew to enjoy these characters a lot unfortunately for the nature of this book it being so short in between chapters i don't think there's room for development yes you do see it bit by bit but it's mostly dedicated to sort of expected tropes and story elements for manga like this it's not until you reach the very end of the book book with the two extra stories that I believe are written more in the traditional manga style where you have long form content and not broken up by you know many chapters every two pages and you can tell a full story. Sei is kidnapped and as a result Akuya is moving to free her and you learn about her past and other things which I thought was really nice and actually brought everything back together of course reinforcing the love of these two characters that they now have for each other. Akuya is is conniving, smart, there's a lot of rumors about her, but at the end of the day, she's just playing everybody and she enjoys the chaos, the mischief that has formed because of her image and her personality. Say was offered the opportunity to ascend from being a commoner, so she took that and ran with it. Now she is head over heels for Akuya, and the two just share a really nice bond that, as you read along the story, gets reinforced and grows stronger and stronger. So if you like the perverted comedy, and if you like 
the uh, copious amounts of moisture and juices talk that's in this book, then When the Villainess Seduces the Main Heroine might be for you. The art is fantastic though. That is probably my favorite aspect of it. I really enjoyed the drawings here from Kasai Fuji. The next one that we're going to talk about is, Is the Order a Rabbit? Volume 1. This is by Koi. This is a four coma comedy series about a group of girls that run a cafe in Japan. At the start of the book, we get introductions to each of the main girls here in full colored pages, which is really interesting. You see the character of Kokoa, who is, I guess, the main protagonist as she is moving in to a new school. And the cafe also has an apartment building of sorts, if memory serves me right. She's very clumsy and a klutz and doesn't realize at first that the cafe is where she needs to go. So when they figure that out, not only is she home, but she also acquires a new job as she meets the character of Chino, who is the daughter of one of the owners of the establishment, and she quickly puts Kokoa to work. We also meet uh, Rize, Chia, and Seattle. Each of them have very distinct personalities, and the majority of this book is setting up the not only the plot of Kokoa and how she comes in contact with the cafe, but also introducing all of these characters and eventually the dynamic that they're all going to have working as a team. They're going to be highs and lows, of course, your typical uh, story elements when it comes to comedy series and manga, and obviously amplified by the style of the four coma. For me personally, this is probably my one negative when it comes to this book. I'm not really a fan of four coma books. I've tried reading them in the past and I guess, I don't know if age plays a factor, but I find it kind of cumbersome to read, especially the orientation. I kept having to rewire my brain and realize that you're supposed to go down and then up and then down again and you read the other column and you go on until you finish the book. But the humor is definitely there. I quite enjoyed the interaction between the characters and the goofiness and silliness. There is this uh, rabbit that first you might think, oh, it's a cute rabbit, but the rabbit actually starts talking and there's a mystery behind that and you find out about it and it goes all over the place. The art, I would say, is cute, precise, and really tiny. That's another thing with the four coma. It's just comic strips, so you can't really, like, fully appreciate the art until you get like a bigger square and you have more detailed character artwork. But for the most part, yeah, it's it's like reading a comic strip, obviously. So if you like the four coma format, you're in luck. If you like cute girls doing cute things with the silly uh, humor and sometimes adventures into the slapstick realm, uh, then this book might be for you. Oh boy, here we have Days with My Stepsister, Volume 1. I say, oh boy, because I have previous experience with this book. You see, this is a multimedia project. I believe it has uh, not only an anime and manga, but the original light novel and some sort of visual novel. I might be mistaken on that. I watched the anime for the summer season 2024, so I was curious if the manga would be as good, better, or worse than the anime. For the most part, I think I enjoyed this a little bit more than what I saw with the show. It definitely reads a lot better, and the characters, you can sort of get into their head a little bit more. With the anime, you're sort of looking at a finished product, and with this, I sort of felt myself uh, giving sort of a different voice to the characters as I read them. This is the manga adaptation, of course. The original story is by Ghost Mikawa and this one is drawn by Yumika Kanade. So what the heck is this book about? We follow the character of Yuta Asamura, who learns from his father that he now has plans to remarry. Yuta is pretty chill about it, pretty okay. He thought it was a natural conclusion, of course, after his parents' divorce, but they throw a wrench in the plan here as Yuta finds out that his future stepmom has a daughter. At first thinking it's a little kid, then finds out, I believe, Yuta is like a year older than her or something like that. And the character is called Saki. Saki is a beautiful young girl. She is the talk of the town wherever she goes. And as a result in school, she might have developed a nasty reputation of the scandalous kind, even though she's not like that. That's because, you know, boys are weird and uh, awful people <laughs> and they start up uh, stupid rumors. But the main focus of the story is the new relationship that's forming here. Utah and Saki 
Rocky don't really want to open their barriers. They don't want to express themselves to each other. They would rather continue as strangers that happen to be living together and not deal with the consequences of, of opening up for the other person. Yuta is surprised by the rumors, but as he starts to get to know her, bit by bit, he realizes that, hey, you shouldn't really judge a book by its cover. And I have to be honest with you, I like the premise. I just didn't like the way it went about it. The idea of these two characters exploring a new family dynamic. If you've never had a sibling, how do you get accustomed to that? How do you move forward? Uh, the boundaries and getting to know each other and all that stuff as uh, quote unquote adults is very interesting. However, this sort of leers into um, weird territory when it comes to a boy and a girl meeting up for the first time and uh, they might be confusing family with relationships, teenagers, hormones, ah. Uh. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying that this is a manga that goes into that territory, but it does explore some of the concepts and ideas. As you have these characters that are confused and are asking questions, they are insecure about themselves and they find some sort of security, if you will, in each other. It's not like they want to hook up or anything, but at the same time, they are just naturally reacting to, uh, you know, what's uh, happening. They didn't choose to be family and now they're thrown into this awkward scenario. All of that is explored here and how these characters react to it. The art is okay. I enjoy it. It's similar to the anime. It's very simple but nicely detailed and sweet to look at. Nothing major in my honest opinion. It definitely serves its purpose of highlighting these characters. But again, I am probably making it seem way worse than it really is. It's just the fact that it peers into that scenario a little too much for my comfort, but at the end of the day, the bulk of this story, especially with Volume 1, is just the drama, I guess, of uh, acquiring a new family member and getting to know each other and sort of the complexities of that new family being forged. The final book that we're going to talk about is Blade and Bastard Volume 1. This is essentially a dark fantasy epic about a character called Iarumas, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, that this character searches dungeons for dead adventurers, brings them back up, uh, gets a commission fee, I guess, from the church, and they're able to do uh, revival spells and bring these characters back. Sometimes if they don't bring them fast enough, the characters will just stay dead. People tend to shy away from Iaruma simply because they're just seeing him as an undertaker, a glorified undertaker, if you will. He's always hanging out with the dead and exploring the dungeons. He himself was revived from a corpse and has no recollection of his previous life. Now he's using his work to sort of explore the dungeons and search for clues as to his origins. Now the story kicks off when he ventures into one of the levels in said dungeon and finds finds a party that was massacred, and before leaving with the bodies, he finds a character called Garbage. Garbage is this feral young lady, she's a swordswoman, she's the sole survivor of this party, and he decides to bring her up. People are sort of scared of this pair because of Iaruma's past, and Garbage, they did not see her in a good light. She was mistreated. There's this rumor that gets told in this first volume about her surviving this caravan, which was attacked by monsters. For some reason, the monsters never attacked her or desired to eat her. So people just started saying that uh, she's a snack that even the monsters wouldn't eat, which is a horrible thing to say. In other words, garbage and sort of the nickname stuck. That is awful. So now the main plot of the book is about these two characters forming a party of their own. Iaruma is going to keep searching the dungeons, exploring them and trying to find clues about his origin as well as garbage to see where they come from and how they're going to move forward from that. Easily one of the best highlights of this book is the gorgeous artwork. This is super dark, dreary, heavy. The monster designs are great. The action is brutal, macabre, and intense at times. This is definitely not safe for work for that reason. I really enjoyed the dark fantasy aspects. There are a lot of tropes that we've seen before, but they're played really well. When you have 
have sort of that mix on the dungeons with the monsters and a character that was resurrected and isn't loved by all makes for a compelling read. He is a character that you want to find out more about, Yoruma, and just makes the book that much more mysterious and engaging for the reader. I am looking forward to reading more about this. I can't wait for Volume 2 to dive deep into the mysteries of the dungeons and, of course, Yeruma with his new party of characters. All right, there it is, four brand new volume ones that you can check out. Thank you to the folks at Yen Press for making this video possible. I truly do appreciate it. But what about you guys? Are you excited for any of these four books? Let me know in the comments section down below. That's going to be it for now. Thank you once again for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of Manga Geekdom. That's going to be it for now. Thank you once again. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.